hi friends. I'm so honored to be with you here tonight virtually um, for this wonderful moment of Holy Week. Um, I'm so excited to be sharing with you today. Um, as I was reflecting on this passage and this wonderful service, um, one particular phrase kept coming up for me, and um, that is, uh, this isn't how it was supposed to be. And when I think of that phrase, I think of the story of my grandfather. My grandfather was a carpenter, much like someone we know, and he was the life of the party, would do anything for anyone, was constantly fixing things and building things for people and just going out of his way all the time. And um, I was a huge family man and family was so important to him. Um, and uh, as he got older and time went on, signs of dementia started um, popping up. And slowly I watched him um, forget things. He forgot who people were. He forgot where he was sometimes. Um, as he degenerated, uh, it became clear that uh, he needed to be moved somewhere where he could get more frequent care. Um, and unfortunately, when he passed, um, he was in a home surrounded by family that he couldn't remember anymore. And in that moment, when I heard that, the summer before I was to go into seminary, the only thing I could think of was, this isn't how it was supposed to be. Um, and I feel like that's kind of the, the theme of a lot of parts of the story um, tonight. And you can see it from the very beginning when Peter in anger and grief lashes out at the slave of one of the soldiers that comes to retrieve Jesus and chops off his ear. And even then, God is with us and God is with him in his grief as Jesus stops and takes time to heal Malchus's ear before going off to his death. And, you know, um, it's easy for us to look at this situation in hindsight and say, oh, well, Jesus resurrected. And so that's what we need to focus on. But I invite you to really um, embrace the grief of this moment as Peter follows behind and tries desperately to stay close to Jesus and realizes that he can't be part of the trial and see the kangaroo court that Jesus has to go through. And so we see this juxtaposition of Peter denying Jesus while Jesus goes through a trial that Pilate himself sees as being false. And as Peter denies Jesus, I can only imagine that he's saying to himself, this isn't how it was supposed to be. And as Jesus has to endure verbal and physical abuse, even as he knows this is how it's supposed to be because he's fulfilling prophecy, there's probably a part of him that wondered if this was really how it was supposed to be. And even then, God is with them because Peter is protected. He stays safe during this whole incident. Prophecies are still being fulfilled, even in the midst of this ridiculous trial that the Romans don't know what to do with, and that, that uh, the Jewish leaders are, are sort of bending rules to make executions happen. Even then, prophecies are still being fulfilled. Um, and, you know, Jesus affirms that this is part of what's going to happen in John 16 when he says, you will experience pain and then you will experience joy. And the disciples don't understand that at the time, but that has to be something that was going through Peter's head in this moment when 
he's experiencing this darkness. And I'm so glad that as dark as this moment is, we can know that God is present in those moments, that God is present in that grief. Jesus never rebukes Peter for grieving him. He never rebukes any of the disciples for grieving him or says that it was a waste. In fact, when Jesus returns resurrected, he chooses to return in a disabled body with the scars of his trauma still with him and uses that trauma to help convince Thomas that what Thomas is seeing and feeling is real and that he can trust that the person in front of him is really Jesus. And so I feel like this is an opportunity as dark and as horrible as it is to go through grief and to not know what to do or how to respond or to be forced to grieve away from our loved ones because of various circumstances, we can know that God is with us, that God acknowledges our pain and our suffering and doesn't say, let me smooth over it, let me pave over it really easily. But God says that pain can be used to help others heal. Not that it's okay that those things happened, not that it was meant to happen a certain way, but that God can use those things for good. And that is the wonderful thing about Good Friday, is that this horrible incident of someone being murdered by the state for crimes they didn't commit is used to save the entire world. And more than that, Jesus comes back and continues to teach the disciples and prepare them for what's coming next. And it's not the kingdom they had planned on. He's not overthrowing the Roman Empire. He's not establishing a new physical kingdom that gets rid of all oppression immediately and, you know, frees the Jews from the oppression that they're under, but he's opening the way for far greater miracles than what he performed and experienced during his time on earth. And so that is the joy of the Good Friday experience, is that we can know that as cliche as it is to say, that it is always darkest before dawn that even, even in this trial that happened in the dead of night where several people don't know what to do in the midst of this strange situation and Pilate says, he hasn't done anything wrong, what do you want me to do? Even then when it's saying this isn't what was supposed to happen, God makes it work out. God is there with us. God is there with us in our grief, in our sobbing, in our silence, in our sadness. God is there, and God will always be there. Um, when I started seminary, I was still in the midst of grieving my grandfather's death, and I happened to go into my systematic theology class with Billy Abraham, and Billy Abraham, um, my professor, happened to look shockingly similar to my grandfather to the point that when I would see him smile at me, it was like looking at the face of my grandfather all over again. And that was a moment where I felt personally that God was with me. He was with me in my sobbing, and he was with me every time I saw Professor Abraham. So I encourage you, friends, even in the midst of your grief, to know that God is with you and to look out for instances where God is showing you that he's with you 
in your rage, in your grief, in your anger. Embrace all of it. Let all of it be true and honest and beautiful. And know that we are here with you, that God is here with you, and that you are loved. You are loved in spite of what hasn't worked out. You are loved in spite of who you've lost. You are loved because of all the things you've been through. You are loved, beautiful friends. And I encourage you to remember that on this Good Friday. Thank you.